Facts First presents Colorado Mom Leads Double Life Until Her Family Uncovers the Truth. Help us spread the word about Facts Verse by clicking that like button, and also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Most mothers will do anything for their children. They'll stay up late making cupcakes for a bake sale the next day. They'll drive them to their after-school activities and spend every last dollar they have on their kids. Mothers don't do these things because they have to, they do because they want to. Paige Bergfield, a mother of three, is no exception. She's the type of mother that you would call a super mom. She was raising her three kids on her own, and she worked hard at it. The 34-year-old mother had been divorced twice, and she worked hard to care for her kids. While juggling more than one career, she made sure that she had plenty of time for her kids. Paige was always busy. When she wasn't cleaning, cooking, doing the laundry, driving her kids to their various activities, she was working to support her family. She even let her kids sleep in her bed with her. Paige would often sacrifice her own happiness and her privacy to create a loving environment for her kids. Her friends, who were mothers, were impressed by the things she did for her children. Paige's friends said that she could carry a baby on one hip while cooking dinner, talking on the phone, and helping her kids with homework. Her friends say that she could do six things at once. She also had many ways to make money. She sold pampered chef cookware, she sold baby slings, she spent time flipping houses. This woman did it all. When she realized that she still wasn't making enough money with her ventures, she considered babysitting. She even thought about breeding dogs. These ventures would only add to the chaos in her home, so they weren't really the best of ideas. She had dreams for herself, and she was trying to figure out a way to fit them into her hectic life. Ever since Paige was little, she wanted to be a dancer. She even wanted to teach her children to dance. When she was in her 20s, she worked in Denver, Colorado as an exotic dancer, and that was how she met her first husband. Despite her dreams of owning her own dance studio, Paige worked hard at her other jobs. Unfortunately, she just couldn't make ends meet, and finally, she found a way to make a lot of money. The only problem was that it wasn't exactly uh, legal. Paige decided to use her organizational skills to start an escort service. She created a pseudonym for her business, Carrie, and she ran the business out of her home and a nearby office. The business was called Models Incorporated. Nobody but her closest of friends knew about this business venture. Paige rarely worked the escort side of the business herself, however, she did so occasionally when she had to. She made sure that she never crossed the line into illegal territory, though. She knew if she did, it would put her family in jeopardy. Things were going really well for Paige. She was doing great financially, and her family was happy. On Thursday, June 28, 2007, Paige met up with her ex-husband, Howard Beegler, for a date. They went to dinner in Eagle, Colorado, and the date went well, and Howard called Paige at around 9 p.m. to make sure she got home all right, and she told him that she was almost home. Paige had a 120-mile drive back to her house in Grand Junction. By Saturday morning, Paige's kids and her nanny still hadn't heard from her, and that was very unlike Paige. They were used to her working irregular hours, but she had never been gone for two days without any word. Finally, the nanny called the police, and it wasn't long before the police found their first clue. The next night, they found her 2005 Ford Focus burning in a parking lot about three miles from her home there was no sign of Paige. It was about a month later when they found her business cards and her checks. They were scattered across an 11-mile stretch along a highway southeast of Grand Junction. When Paige's secret life as Carrie came out, her parents were shocked. They couldn't believe that she had done something so questionable. Still, nobody knew what had happened to Paige. The police suspected foul play. They were sure that she didn't walk away from her life by faking her own death, she was a supermom, after all, and that made the police believe that someone had done something to Paige. During the investigation, the police investigated both of Paige's ex-husbands. Dixon was her most recent ex, and he was the father of her children, Cole, Taft, and Jess. It was when Paige and Dixon got divorced that her financial problems began. She was having trouble keeping up with the payments on their home that sat on six acres of land. After talking to both of her ex-husbands, the police found that they both had solid alibis. The next suspects were Carrie's clients. Paige was a professional, and she didn't have any clients who considered her to be an enemy. 
The police interrogated eight of them, and only one person rose their suspicions. His name was Lester Ralph Jones, and his phone records showed that he was one of the last people that Page called before she disappeared. Jones had an alibi, but the police thought that something was off about him. In 2012, a hiker in western Colorado found Page's body in the hills. The police tested the remains, and it was Page. According to the autopsy, she had been dead since the very night she disappeared. Now they had to find the person responsible for her death. The police kept digging, and they found enough evidence to arrest Lester Ralph Jones. The lot where they found Page's car was across the street from where Jones worked. With him being the last one to contact Page, they had enough to arrest him. The case went to court, and it ended in a mistrial. Shortly after the trial, Lester Ralph Jones's ex-wife came forward. She told the police that her ex had a history of violence. He assaulted one of her ex-boyfriends. She told the police that she thought Jones killed Page because Page knew too much and he didn't want his wife to find out. The police had her testimony, so Jones went back to court. His lawyers argued that there was no physical evidence tying him to the crime. They also tried to pin the murder on a man who died in 2011. He finally, though, admitted to killing Page, but he never said why he did so. The judge sentenced Jones to life in prison without parole. Page's kids went to live with Page's parents, and their father takes a much greater interest in their lives now. He helps out when he can. Page started her business to give her kids a better life. Sadly, the exact opposite happened. Now they have no mom. Subscribe for more.